Last week, I started talking about how physics is universal. And I used gravity in it as an example because our understanding of gravity really kickstarted the scientific revolution. It, it got the whole physics game started and it showed us how simple mathematical principles and ideas and equations can be applied throughout the universe. But it doesn't stop at gravity. It doesn't stop at gravity. All of physics is universal. For example, for example, think about conservation of energy and momentum, right? If two cars crash into each other and you're the investigator and you're studying what happened in this car accident, you're going to use conservation of energy. You're going to use conservation of momentum to reconstruct what happened. You're going to use some physics, these very basic fundamental concepts in physics. The conservation of momentum means that the, all the momentum going in equals all the momentum going out. It might get redistributed and put in different places, but the total coming in is the total coming out. But we don't just use that concept here on the earth. We don't just use that concept to reconstruct car accidents. We use it in particle colliders. If you're smashing together two atoms at nearly, or two uh, particles at nearly the speed of light, you are using conservation of energy and conservation of momentum to understand what happens after that. Okay, there's just they're just microscopic car crashes. Uh, if you're trying to understand how planets form in a protoplanetary disk from material gluing together and colliding with each other, guess what you're invoking? You're invoking conservation of energy and momentum. You know, this Kuiper Belt object that New Horizons flew past recently, originally it's called Ultimate Thule, but now it's called Arakoth, I believe. And it looks like a lumpy peanut. It looks like two objects that long ago merged together. How did we understand that picture? We understood that picture through conservation of energy and momentum. These are fundamental constant, constant concepts that we apply throughout the universe. And it's not just there, gravity, conservation of energy and momentum, but there's also nuclear physics, right? Understanding how nuclei can split apart or combine and transform into other elements. The exact same physics that we use to understand what's happening inside of a nuclear reactor or inside of a nuclear bomb is the exact same physics we use to understand what's happening in the core of the sun because the sun is a giant fusion reactor. It's the exact same physics we use to understand how supernova trigger. It's the exact same physics we use to understand when the state of the universe when it was 15 minutes old. Think about that. Think about that. We can write down equations. We can have a physical understanding of what's happening inside of a nuclear reactor, and we can apply it to the entire state of the universe because it had the same temperatures, the same densities, the same properties. When the universe was 15 minutes old and we can do it without even blinking, it's just crazy. Think about heat and pressure and work and thermodynamics, okay? The exact same equations that we use to understand what's happening inside of your car engine. The exact same physics. We use, I want to say this again, but slower just to emphasize it. The exact same physics that we use to understand how your car engine works at a very fundamental level, we use to understand how gas clouds contract and heat up or expand and cool down. I estimate, just based on my own lifetime in astronomy and astrophysics, something like 90% of papers in astronomy and physics make some mention of thermodynamics somewhere in the paper. It is just there. It is just everywhere, the very concepts of thermodynamics. And so all the thermodynamics that we use to understand our daily life here from the weather to the temperature in your house to your air conditioner apply throughout the universe. And don't even get me started on electromagnetism. Too late, you got me started on electromagnetism. Radio waves, okay. We make radio waves, we have a radio tower, you have a radio antenna, you tune in, radio, 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 okay? The universe makes radio waves. We listen to jets 
extending tens of thousands of light years out of active galactic nuclei in the radio. The sun is emitting radio waves. Jupiter is emitting radio waves. A neutral hydrogen gas clouds emit radio waves, and it's all radio waves. Once you understand radio waves, you understand how all of these things are produced. X-rays, the exact same X-rays that your dentist uses to check out your teeth are the exact same x-rays launched from a solar flare or off the surface of a pulsar. Once you understand how x-rays work, you can apply them everywhere, not just here on Earth, but throughout the universe. Uh, fluorescence, all right? If you have a compact fluorescent light bulb in your house, there's a little bulb with some gas in it and you shoot it with energy and then it glows, okay? Look at a planetary nebula. Look at a planetary nebula. It's a bunch of gas hanging out, getting shot with energy and glowing. Fluorescence, it's the exact same concept. Applied both inside your light bulb and in a nebula thousands of light years away. Uh, turbulence, uh, sound waves, like I could just go on and on and on and on. Like you give me a physics concept and I'll give you a dozen ways it's applied and understood throughout the universe or how we're using that concept throughout the universe. This concept of universality is a cornerstone of physics. It's a cornerstone of science. It is how we unlock the cosmos. If we didn't have this understanding of universality, if we didn't have this understanding that physics could be applied everywhere, we would be confined to understanding what's happening here on the surface of the earth and that's it. We would see the sun and say, how does the sun work? I don't know. But because we have universality, because we have this underlying thread, we can say, oh, I know how nuclear reactors work and I can calculate energy yields and blah, 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 using math. Oh, wait. I can look at that hot glowy thing and I can figure out how it works. The only way I can do that is if physics is universal. And to me, that is the most amazing thing about the universe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to click uh, like, share, subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff and do the usual YouTube thing of going to patreon.com slash PM Sutter. It's how this show keeps going. There's a button floating around my head somewhere. Thank you so much and I'll see you next week.